Hi hey everyone, in this brief video I will step through the process for completing this Google form which will satisfy the Pathways Discourse Assessment process for sections of first year writing at Virginia Tech. That is uh, courses um, numbered ENGL 1105 and ENGL 1106. So there's some brief kind of overview material here in the form that, that helps you understand uh, how this process is set up and what um, what reasons we have for completing it. We're undertaking a pilot of this process uh, in fall 2018 and then in fall, and sorry, in spring 2019, the process will be required for all sections of first year writing 1105 and 1106. The form asks you to enter your email address and that should be your Virginia Tech email address. And then there are some instructions that show you uh, a little bit about Basically, what you're doing is identifying a, a, a one of the major projects or papers in 1105 and 1106, and then you're rating it um, in according to three ratings um, for each of five Pathways Discourse student learning outcomes, or what are sometimes referred to as SLOWs. I've prepared two worksheets for you to kind of assist with the process. The first is the simplest of the worksheets, and I've just clicked into it to show you that it's essentially a, a table that has uh, each of the student learning outcomes uh, and then the language, kind of the descriptive language for below competent, competent, and above competent. You'll rate each student project um, for each of the student learning outcomes as one of these ratings, below, competent, or above. And again, I think this is, you know, it might be helpful to print this out to have it close at hand as you work through uh, the major projects in your section or depending on how many sections you're teaching for each section it might be helpful to have a separate sheet because the sections get entered into the form one at a time. I've also prepared a work a sort of an annotated worksheet so in the second link you'll find a worksheet that shows you how this would work in a kind of a mock-up section I'm just gonna uh, you know suppose this is a section that I'm teaching right now with 20 students it means that um, You'll have some students who, uh, for their major project that you're assessing, rate as below competent, competent, and above competent. But that row should add up to 20, which is the number of students in the course. And so you see 2, 10, and 8. That adds up to 20. And, uh, and so each of these five rows will have a similar um, tally. All right, so you have to choose, each of these with a star is required. So you do have to find your name in the list. I'm gonna come down and find my own name. And then you also have to choose the class you're teaching. You'll find every, every section of first year writing is available there. Now, for major projects, we're really trying to target just two right now. For ENGL 1105, we're looking at rhetorical analysis projects. And for ENGL 1106, we're interested in a source-based research paper. This should be the most sub sort of substantial of the research projects in 1106 sections. Although understanding the curriculum as it's currently configured, we also understand that there, there really could be a justification for you choosing other. And that means if you chose other, you would enter in yet a different project that you had um, your students do. You feel like is a major project for the course. Um, if you choose other, you should use take advantage of this next item, which is description of assignment, to tell us a little bit about what the assignment is. But for now, I'm going to just choose 1105 rhetorical analysis. And finally, um, for this first page, I'm going to uh, enter in the number of students in the section, which is for my section, it's 20. Now you'll notice down here before I click next that there are seven pages. Each of the next five pages has one of the outcomes on it. And then the final page gives you a chance to provide us with some feedback about the usefulness of this process and sort of how you've experienced it. Give us some constructive suggestions for me to take back to the Pathways office. All right, but for now, I think I'm ready to click Next. And having clicked, ne clicked Next, you'll actually see the uh, this actually this form is is uh, it's got a little bit of a glitch with it. I'll fix that. But uh, you'll see um, it essentially shows you the student learning outcome number one discover and comprehend information from a variety of written, oral, and visual sources. And then it has the three ratings, above competent, competent, and below competent. And so in keeping with the worksheet, which we'll just use that as the example, I believe we had eight students who were above, we had 10 students who were competent, 
and two who were for this criteria, for this outcome, were below competent. And once those are entered, then I'm ready to click next and it takes me to the next item. So again, you would continue through this process, entering numbers until you get to the very end to submit. And once you've submitted, you've satisfied the process for your particular section, the section that you've entered for. If you're teaching more than one section, you would come back and begin the process again for the next section. Very important caveat here is to hold this process lightly at this stage. Um, and also to understand that our expectation is that this take no longer than one hour per section. Um, we're working on that, um, the sort of the, the, the depth of engagement for assessment with the Pathways Office. But for right now, this should not take longer than one hour. If it's starting to take you longer than that, we should certainly talk um, and uh, with the email you've received to notify you about this uh, pilot assessment. Uh, you'll Actually, you can find my contact information here on the top of the the uh, form too, which includes my email address and also my phone number. So that's my cell phone number. That means you can reach me with any questions you have about this process, any difficulties, um, any concerns you have. Be happy to hear from you and we'll do what I can to help.